My name's David. Um, I'm homeless. Basically, we are online uh, on the crowdfunding tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, so people can actually buy the book. You've been waiting on this a long time, and it quite possibly might be your, your only chance. Tell me about the first time you pointed a gun at someone. So much is happening that something big is going to happen, and I'm, I'm like, yeah. I try to be gone relatively early, and I don't come back till late. I'd make sure there's no mess. I don't make a noise while I'm here. I think here about, I think I've been here off and on about three years now. Right. After you, you filmed me for the first time, and people were asking me questions about that, why is these two people following me around with a camera? I told them. And then I was coming to the completion of the book, and when I heard that the filming was going to be on TV, people were interested, said, have you thought about getting your book published? I hadn't, to be honest with you. But people started showing some interest. The people started thinking that this was a viable project, that this might help get me out of my, my situation. And the project kind of just exploded. I was looking through uh, the chapters that you sent me. Yeah. My suggestion is that we take a bit of the conversation with uh, the woman at the bus station. Right, um, yeah. And then actually the, the flashback to 20 years ago. So I drop out the whole aftermath of the robbery at the, bus station, at the train station and yeah, leave that. That's yeah, the I understand it, yeah. Vi er lige ved at gennemgå de ting, som, uh, som Dave har skrevet, sådan at, at der bliver en, uh, en fin fortælling på, uh, på tirsdag i tre dele, uh, som, uh, som opsummerer hans liv, fortæller om nogle af de ting, der er sket i det, og som ligesom kan give... De folk, der er der en, en fornemmelse af, hvad der, hvad der er i bogen. I think we can make it from here. The place yep. was small enough to here. Depends on how fast you read. Um, it, it depends on how, how comfortable I am with, with the audience. Should you just try and, and read it out loud to me? And I'll, I'll actually time it. Just take your time and remember that even though we're most Danes understand English. Yeah, we need I understand. To, yeah. Okay. The place was small enough to avoid the legal restrictions on smoking, so I took out my book, poured my beer and lit a cigarette. Ten minutes later, excuse me, are you English? That's true. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was well insulated and no one paid attention to me. He refers to your dad. And it's oh, dad right. Dad, right. Yeah, set father, yeah. yeah. So before I left, I told them, nice doing business with you, which was unacceptably cocky. Robbery was one thing, but don't take the piss. As I've been told in the past, I have a flair for the dramatic, which frequently backfires. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't come to judge, they don't come to criticize, they actually come because they hope they will have a good night. Mm. So you can be completely relaxed. They, they like you already. I collect bottles on average six to seven hours early week. But during the later weeks, I'm going to kick it up to between eight to ten. The bottles have basically been my only source of income for four and now coming into the fifth year. I'm just going in here for what, I guess you'd call it a job interview, as a guide. Homeless people showing people 
the city from their perspective. Michael Jacobson? Cool. Welcome. Back. Here we go. I, I couldn't find the one in English. Uh, it's okay, I can, I can read it, it's fine. It's just, it's just speaking it I have problems with. Okay. It's the places uh, you visit on a, on a power to walk. Okay. Yeah. One day we had 150 people out okay. going up power to walk. And then I have uh, this one too. That's uh, the newest, uh, how many homeless people there is in Denmark and uh, yeah, no, no, just look it through. Yeah, I'll just you know, at least get at least get the highlights and yeah, the twenty-eight or the twenty-nine, either or or both. I'm not bothered. All right, super. Thank you. Appreciate you giving. Yeah, the call that'll be something. It'll be interesting to do. I have a job. I'm saying yes, and for a lot more things that I would have considered myself even capable of. 12 months ago, I go, yeah, you want to put a camera in front of me? Fine. You want to make me stand up in front of the mayor and a bunch of people? Yeah. You want me to take strangers around Aarhus and tell them about it from a homeless perspective? Let's do it. You want to publish your book? Why not? Great idea. Let's do some fundraising. Great. Uh, why me? Why now? You know, just... When I was 14, my mother and stepfather were running, in English we call it an off-license, a liquor store. And there were some, shall we say, irregularities in the account, some in the stock. So Mike asked for my help, basically to fake a burglary. I mean, as he said, you don't want mommy to go to jail, do you? Obviously not, so I helped. That got, that kind of broke any kind of moral qualms I might have had about it. Second time, pay some bills, you know, get a new place. Okay. That was the next, you know, pushed my, my moral boundaries a little bit further. And within six months, I didn't even have to convince me anymore, just ask. And that was it. I was a thief. Slowly but surely, I became the kind of guy that could walk out of a a car across the road and into a bank and put, point a gun at innocent people. I didn't think of them as people. They were just people working in an institution and I didn't identify with them. We started our, my criminal career together. We split somewhere in the, in the middle, but we came together at the end. He was actually driving the car that, I, that was my getaway car and that was, I was in when they stopped us and arrested me. I got eight years, he got seven. I'm off up to Risk Rest to discuss with Tommy, my 30 guy. Uh, it's basically, as, long as, as well as reading from the book, Tommy's going to be asking some questions around the book, the story of the book, maybe questions from the, from the, that arise from the passage I've just read from. Basically, we are online uh, on the crowdfunding tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. We're going to have some iPads and stuff like that so people can actually buy the book. Go. Cool. As soon as as soon as soon we're done with it. Yeah. Uh, and people can also go and, and share the event and stuff like that. The goal is to collect 35,000 kroner together so we can hire a professional English redaktør who can go to the book with a telly cam and make sure that it gets a chronology that the book is worthy or if we have enough money to at the at trigger button for we need to give them the story uh, so i will go on what will actually uh... i can survive without a roof over my head i can survive without a go i can survive without the flat and the job but i can only survive i can only do it if it's in the process of the dream it's a summation of my entire of, of my life all right as I see it for you, it's also a preparation to actually uh, socialize with people. Yeah, that's... If I eight months ago and said to you, by the way, on, on Friday, you're going to stand with the 
with maybe this lady you have met briefly down in the basement and you're gonna rehearse, you have said, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. shoot me in the knee. Yeah, exactly, uh, you know? I mean, I, I, I couldn't have done this actually. I knew nothing about Denmark, which meant I wasn't likely to meet anybody who I knew or who did the things I did, used to do. You know, if I'd gone to France or Spain, I would have been tripping over English criminals. Greece even, or Italy. But Denmark? Who the hell's gonna look for me here? There's gonna be Dave reading, there's gonna be musicians playing, and the mayor is gonna talk. But the guy got me into his schedule, and I, I expected like, and you know, and you know, I'm going to his place, you know, his campaign headquarters, yeah. Yeah. you know? I would have been happy with just, you know, maybe a few people down here, you know? but no, I'm getting, you know. I think he deserves it, he deserves it. Jeg synes, at, øh, at vi kan hurtigt blive enige om, at han måske ikke altid har været det perfekte menneske. Vi kan blive enige om, at, at han har gjort ting, øh, som han åbenlyst fortryder i dag, og som han, som han taler om af fortrydelse. Men jeg synes oprigtigt, at han er et af de mennesker, jeg har mødt, der virkelig fortjener mulighed for at kunne arbejde sig tilbage øh, til verden. Whatever happens with this, this is going to be a turning point in my life. Things are going to happen to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not exactly clear exactly what's going to happen, no, but I am totally 100% convinced that my life is going to change pretty rapidly, yeah. pretty significantly. Yeah. All right, and yeah. now is a good time to wrap up the past yeah. Yeah. in the book right. yeah. before I move on to the next story, the next part of my story, right. which might result in a different book. Right. But I think this is now a nice time to bring everything to a conclusion. Yeah. Tie it all up and go, you want to know what, how, I got to, how I got to this? Read that. And it'll answer all your questions. This bag is the base. As you can see, this is the one that gets... If there is any snow, this is the one that gets it. The other bag. Set my alarm. I won't be cold in about five minutes, no. Um, I don't know how many years I've got left on this planet, but the age of 46 is probably less than I've got, the, that I've got behind. So let's try and do something with them. It might be the best years of my life. Right, see you later guys. I was crippled with it this morning, and last night I didn't get much sleep. I was just like, could not convince myself on any level that this was going to be a smart move for me to make. I don't know who's going to be there. Don't know how many, if anyone. Don't really, you know, try not to think about that. Um, and it's just, I guess it's, this is my first kind of like official going out in front of the public, you know, this is me, this is what I've been doing. Here you go. I guess at the back of my mind, it's like, there's been so many cancellations, so many things talked about that was gonna happen that didn't. The fact that actually something is gonna happen means it's like, get, yeah, go, do it. You know, this, you know, this has been, you've been waiting on this a long time and it quite possibly might be your, your only chance. for me. I don't think there's going to be like hundreds of people st stood up in the corner because we're going to run out of seats, but I think, I think we're going to be okay. Um, and it's not the quantity of the audience, it's the quality of the audience.
Yeah, I mean, nu vil jeg gerne have, at I tager rigtig godt imod Dave, for nu kommer han herop. Man, the last time I saw this many people in one room, all focused on me, was at York Crown Court. That was a tough audience, and I died that day. <laughs> Ironically, I'm going to be covering much of the same material as it came out in court. I'm hoping for a far more positive reaction. <laughs> tell me about your first time. I raised my eyebrows. That story would take longer to tell than the original act. She laughed. Not that first. Your first robbery. <laughs> tell me about the first time you pointed a gun at someone. Actually, that's two separate events. I decided to tell about one of the jobs I got caught for as if it was my first. I've actually taken longer to write it than I serve for the crimes that I write about in it. Um, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have bothered starting it. Both the crimes and the book, for that matter. So, nu bliver jeg ligesom sådan en amerikansk metodistkirke. Nu skal jeg pengene op ad lommen, og nu sender jeg min kur rundt. Fordi øh, der skal ikke være nogen hemmelighed om, at, at grunden til, at vi er, at vi er samlet i dag, er jo øh, fordi, at øh, vi skal hjælpe Dave med at opfylde den her drøm om at udgive den her bog. Fra 250 kroner til 500 kroner, så får man en signeret bog. Man kan selv vælge, om jeg giver 250 for den, eller mener jeg, at den er 500 kroner værd. Udgangspunktet er, at vi skal nå at rejse de her penge på, på 49 dage. Og hvis vi ikke nåede vores mål, så bliver pengene returneret til jer. Det, I jo også kan lige nu, det er, at I kan, I kan også gøre det. Jeg har en iPad her, jeg tror, at Sune har en iPad et eller andet sted. Øh, hvis jeg har en smartphone, og så... Øh, så kan vi lige skyde den her kampagne i gang. My mother's had some reservations about my behavior over the years. Well, she did have. Um, so things that she didn't care for. But there's one thing she never lost. <coughs> was a belief that I could be successful at something. If I only found what that was and focused on it and get it. And this book will be me going, you are right. You were damn right. You had faith when no one else did. And even though you're not here to see it, it's done. I want to thank all of us. It's been very good to me. I hope I haven't embarrassed it. Time for you to come up. Thanks. Oh, you're awesome. It went better than I expected, yeah. Very good. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Very good, Dave. Thank you. That's good. It was such a good. Thank you. It went very, really well. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you outside. Yeah, we'll be around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it. Thanks. Okay. Jeg har gået hele dagen med med hjertet op i halsen og været. Oh, hvordan kommer det til at gå, og slet ikke kunne være, være i det, altså, fordi, at, fordi at man jo selvfølgelig bliver investeret i det, altså, og det har været op og ned med det her projekt, men, men altså, man må sige, at han virkelig, virkelig trækker igennem. Vi snakker med en mand, der for 10 måneder siden ikke, ikke snakkede med fremmede, og for at man kunne ligesom få en samtale, som ikke handlede om andet end en kop kaffe eller noget, så skulle der gå flere måneder til at vi i dag, der står han, hvad, hvad ender der med at være, en 70-80-90 mennesker måske. Øh, hvor jeg halvdelen, han måske, eller mere, han aldrig har set før. Øh, det var nok de færreste, jeg tror også som selv inklusiv, der havde regnet med, at, at det var det, der ville ske øh, for 10 måneder siden. I'm ready to... I can deal with it now. I, I, in a way that I wouldn't have been, say, 12 months ago. I think I'm ready for it. And I think some, so much is happening that something big is going to happen. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. To be honest, I, I don't know if I got worse for it. It's just like, whoa. I mean, the, the chairs were full. There were people standing at the back. That was a, yeah. I filled that joint. Yeah. And I'm gonna. And it's gonna, a joint which is for rent. Maybe you can actually take it over on a permanent basis, eh? Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. I'll make that, you know. You know, do like regular readings, work in progress. Yeah, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that can happen now, tell me. Exactly. Everything can happen.
waiting for my first customers on my first walk. I went out yesterday and again this morning to walk over the route. I'm kind of nervous, um, but I think that's good. A little stage fright keeps you sharp. I don't think, you know, I don't think anyone ex is expecting me to be ca some kind of super professional. Are we all here? Yeah. OK, let's get started. My name's David. Um, I'm homeless. I um, have been for a few years now, and I'm going to be your guy for, for the day, show you a horse from a, a different aspect, the kind of tour guide that the tourist information office wouldn't provide. Contact house. The clue is in the title. That's what, that's what it is. Basically, most people don't choose or think they're ever going to end up in this situation. And when the, everything goes apart, well, they don't know where to go. If your life is already falling apart, you're dealing with other issues as well. Mm. Sometimes you can just go, I don't want to be, I can't deal with that. And basically what they're trying to, trying to do here is show you that, well, sit down, we'll do it. Yeah, you messed up. Yeah, you've got problems. Yeah, all that is true. But you're still worth working with, you're still worth working for. You know, I'm not as young as I used to be, so my kind of warming up period is longer than it used to be. You know, I don't want to be out here too long, too often. Thank you for, you know, like I said, this was my first time and appreciate, and uh, you're a good audience. No, that's good. Thank you. I, I think I was a lot more fluent and a lot more open and that was a very positive experience and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that again. I'm off to see my friends and uh, hang out with them, see what the children have got for Christmas. Does that bell actually work? Hang on. Small people. Hi, kids. Hi. I come bearing gifts. Cheaper than the piano. Oh, it ain't even this, sir. Before it gets completely diluted out. Yeah. Before you. They break each other. Timmy. No, we don't do it like that. No. You know, it would be. No, there these bits come out. This one. <laughs> so less than six days, we have another 9,000 kroner. I'm starting again at the beginning. Um, and I really don't want to do that. God, it's just this. If this was 50 days, you'd get there easy. I'm not, uh, I'm not depressed by it. Uh, we, we, you know, it's six days. But we are going to have to raise about 1,500 a day for the next six days. Um, and that's going to be a lot of money. As a new new year clock is ticking, I'm going to be alongside it, but I'm going to be watching that thinking, come on. We were getting closer and closer, but the time, the clock was ticking. Um, I want to try to stay optimistic, try to stay confident that we were going to do it and everything, but it was like, are we going to do this? Right. And it was basically really within the last few hours that we got that extra just to push us over. We actually got it. Now, now I can get excited. We've now finally got the money. Awesome. It's now February the twenty sixth. The book is supposed to be out March the 15th and we've got nothing. I have a manuscript, I don't have anything else. And Tommy's not talking to me. I don't know what's going on. I should be looking forward. I should be feeling good about this. Happy that I, 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 I did it and I got the chance to do it and I did the best with it. I'm feeling none of that right now, nothing.
vi arbejder på at få, få Davids bog ud så, så hurtigt som overhovedet muligt. Øh, men der er ingen tvivl om, at, øh, at øh, hvis det er lyspunkt, man har i sit liv, det er, at, øh, at man skal udgive en bog, så er det det døde frustrerende, at, øh, at, at bogen ikke bare kommer ud, så man får, øh, får den drøm opfyldt. Men det er en del af en længere proces. Det har været væsentligt sværere at finde en engelsk brugere redaktør, øh, som er bosiddet i Danmark. Bogen har solgt den 234 eksemplarer på nuværende tidspunkt. Hvis du ser på, hvordan folk har købt den, så altså man kan sige, før den første bog er trygt, øh, er vi godt på vej. Der er altså øh, over 200 solgte eksemplarer, og, øh, og nu er det bare, at, øh, at vi skal gå fra fondingen til shippingen. Det vil sige, at øh, bogen skal redigeres, og den skal trykkes, og så skal den forhåbentlig lande i folks postkasser før, før sommerferien. so tired right now you know which is one of the reasons why I was I was getting so stressed with it with the, with the delays and not knowing what's going on um, mostly because I you know I want this I just I want this out before I before I finally break Is it my clock the biggest thing that's come out of all of this is that I know now I have to make I am my life is going to be moving it could be backwards it could be forwards but it's not going to stay like this and that at the moment is predominantly kind of scary it's slightly exciting and to a certain extent kind of fun it's you know I'm 48 eight, eight years of age I didn't think there was an awful lot left about me to discover i was wrong. Apparently, there's a lot more. Um, there is a lot about, more about me to discover. Um, I didn't think I could ever do this. I'd always wanted to write, but I never thought it would actually succeed. You know, I never thought I'd get anybody interested in it or get anyone to be supportive or enthusiastic about it. I didn't think I'd, I could attract that kind of backup. Turns out I can. Very odd. first time I saw you, I was thinking, ah, oh, no, not, not another bum. I mean, I do work in a bar app. Yeah. A lot of those guys show up. And, you know, you just ordered a coffee. I thought, all right, that was a nice change of pace. <laughs> um, and, you know, you just kept coming back and, you know, Frederick started talking about you, you know, parts of who you were and what, you, what you'd done. And I thought, well, there's a great opportunity to actually have an interesting conversation. Jeg blev kontaktet af, af, af Tommy, som var tilknyttet det her projekt, og hvad det, og hørte, at der, har været, der var problemer med, ja, med, med editoren, mere eller mindre. Og hvad det, jeg fandt ud af, at jeg havde, havde tid at bruge på det, og følte, at jeg kunne gøre det, og dag var med på den. Og så tænkte jeg, at det ville være en fed måde at hjælpe på. People ask me, you know, how true is this? It's a combination of people, places and things, but the attitude and the atmosphere, that's true. I had to kind of deal with the ghosts of my past in a way that was kind of interesting and fun to read and not too off-putting. Jeg synes, jeg synes, det er en spændende bog. Og jeg synes, at den er spændende, fordi den kører på både på, at det er en god krimi og på, at det er et, et, et alternativt indblik på, på dansk kultur, som jeg også synes er en vigtig ting at få med. Og det er begge to aspekter, som er vigtige for Dave også. You know, I've basically taken England and dumped it in Denmark mm. and mixed it with what is now my Danish life. And it's schizophrenic. And yeah, and the, the connection and the, the, the leap from one to the other is a difficult one to make. It's a difficult one to live.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you could actually do that, but go on. Yeah, I've just decided what I'm going to spend my first royalty check on. <laughs> so get in the palm or somewhere to live, or even clothes or food. Yeah. I'm just going to, I want to buy this chair, okay? Yeah. I swore I'm not having this haircut until the book comes out. I had hoped it was earlier than it had turned out to be. So I was just like, no, when the book comes out, then I'll get the haircut. I want this chair with like a, a table there yeah. so I can put the laptop on yeah. and I can just be massaging right at the same time. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm, you yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. I don't, you know, my life will have reached its peak, its pinnacle by that stage. Right. So oh. Don't need to sleep on the floor. Nah. So where do you live now, still? I, I, still, live in the, I still live in the same place, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I've still carried on doing what I normally do, mm. even with a book coming out. You it's like, you know, I, yeah, no, yeah. exactly. You know, um, I still have to do my day-to-day. -day. Yeah. As I keep telling people, I haven't actually cashed any royalty checks yet. You know, I haven't actually received any money from this for myself. No. So until such time as that happens, and, what, and how much that is, I'm... I'm still keeping. I'm still keeping going and still doing doing my thing. So, are you excited? Stupid question. <coughs> Actually, not not that stupid. Um, I am now. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. I, I was trying to hike, fight back being excited. Uh, say a week or two ago. Yeah. I was because it's like there've been so many delays and yeah. problems with it. Yeah. I was thinking, no, don't get excited again because no. if you get let down. But now, you know, once it went to the printer and actually got the, the confirmation of the order. Uh -huh. And then Mikael told me about the reception. Yeah. And now it's when I get, now I am, and you know, the posters are, now I am in the Facebook, and yeah, now I am officially excited yeah. by this, yeah. So this one, I need to cut Yeah, it. this, okay. yeah. Doesn't it look like Tom Jones? Try not to wait two years before I have to do it again. <laughs> you know, marking my life away by haircuts. Yeah. Oh, here we are. Thank you. Right. Today's a big day. Uh, this is not a poverty walk. Oh. This is not a for drow. This is me actually doing the book. This is actually it's now going to happen. I've got people coming and um, media coming. <laughs> I've, this is this is really the day that I've been waiting for for over for over a year now, and I am terrified. Go cash in and get paid for my work. Okay. I still have a, I still have my day-to-day -to, -day to do. Been doing this for about six years now. This is actually my job. This is what I do. The writing is a hobby. Hopefully, it will replace this. But I'm not going to expect that. Right. Let's go buy breakfast. Let me. always wanted to write 
And now I think I've got, I, I've got sufficient stories and sufficient command of my language to be able to do that. Um, and that's what they are, they're stories. I'm a storyteller. I'm not a writer in the intellectual sense of the term. I just tell stories to people. I don't do what I describe anymore. I haven't done for over 20 years. This is really me talking about what I used to be. It's not in, in any way any reflection of what I am I'm now. Uh, it was, but it, it is a fairly prayer description of what it was then. Um, but it's, it was a long time ago. It was came out of a set of circumstances which no longer exist. And, a, and relationships that I no longer have. I've built up a new, a new world, a new life. I don't want to do it anymore. And I'm too old for it anyway. I'm going up to do my first interview in Danish and I am not looking forward to it because my spoken Danish is horrible. Det er hjemløse liv, du har i Aarhus. Hvordan er det? Det er ikke en liv, jeg skal uh, rekommendere. Det kan ikke være så meget bedre. Jeg har hyggeligt der. Jeg har ikke tænkt, at jeg skriver bort som hjemløs. Jeg er hjemløs, som du skriver bort. Jeg har ikke tænkt, at jeg It was odd. I didn't actually realise I could do that. That's the most Danish I've spoken probably all year. That was... Man, I hope they don't expect me to keep on doing that, because that was difficult. But it did actually, in a way, keep me disciplined. I, I didn't ramble or go off in tangents. I had to keep it... I had to keep it on track and on the subject. So, I don't know, maybe for discipline-wise, actually speaking Danish might be a good idea. There was times when I was deeply frustrated, deeply frustrated, but it don't matter now. Today, I don't really care. Today, I am happy with it. It's out, it's real now. It's, it's not, oh, I'm writing a book, I've written a book. It's, uh, oh, I'm going to pu publish a book, I've published a book. Whoa, I got two pairs. Whoa. Just come down here and seeing all these people and seeing all the books in the boxes and the posters. It's one really good dream. First and foremost, of course, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Tell på dansk, men det er så stærkt. Jeg synes, jeg har glædet mig rigtig meget til at at være her i dag. De første par gange jeg mødte dig det, det var ned på Rigsrads, hvor du sad over i hjørnet og drak kaffe og lavede research. Jeg vil gerne støtte op. Jeg vil gerne være med. Den gang vi for godt et år siden holdt til vores øh, vores crowdfunding lancering så sagde power til vores så det godt blev sendt til Odia og Amor. Thank you. I'm standing out here alone but no I'm not actually. Um, you're all actually behind me. You all have been. This started off as just something to kill some hours when I'm not out on the streets. Just writing some stuff out of my head. And then someone goes, hey, let's do a book. And I'm going like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who's going to want to read? Who's going to... And like, anyway, dude, what part of homeless flasker sander makes you think that I can afford to get a book out? All right? But then Tommy comes over with a crowdfunding idea and makes it happen. And I'm going like, nah, come on. This is... Is this optimism I'm feeling? And suddenly, Mikkel gets in touch because he saw me on TV. And I'm doing poverty walks on Fodral. And I'm like, okay, what happened to my life? What happened to the, to the weirdo of, with no name sat in the corner drinking the coffee? All right? You helped write, that, write the story. You helped write my story. Thank you for making such an interesting one. Thank you for making it so fun. Tack for out. Jeg tænker, at bogen langt om længe er 
er ude, og det er Dave glad for, og det er vi glade for, og det er de alle glade for. Det her projekt, der handler om, at Daves bog skal udgives, og det er den, det er den nu. Processen er der lang, og der har været op- og nedture, men, men det vigtigste i hele den her proces er jo faktisk egentlig, at Daves bog er færdig. And I hope you can tell all your party members what an awesome read it is. Yeah. That's an actual conversation. Thank you, you're welcome. Hello. Right. I'm signing books, having fun, talking to people. This is awesome. This is... Because of this, other people have like... Oh, this is great. Can you come talk to us? Can you, like, come down here? And can you, you know, one thing has led on to another thing that led on to another thing. This is book one of, book one of the trilogy. My, this story isn't over yet. This story isn't over, mine isn't over, and I hope to have a really good ending for you all. Cheers. <laughs> Put that there. Obviously, you know, I, I would like to improve my living situation. This has been okay, but I, I, it's not something I want to be doing for very much longer. Right. One of the, the side effects of this, if it does do well, I can, I can start improving the quality of my life. I can get some new glasses, a new phone, a new computer, one that actually works properly. Maybe even see a dentist. And yeah, maybe... It would be nice not to freeze over the winter. You know, I've seen other writers in like bookstores and everything. I've got a queue of people all waiting up and signing the, the books. And I don't know. I guess that just. I, I I never really thought that far. It was, but it was really, really strange just to like you know, you know, there was a queue. You know, one stage there was a queue of people waiting. You know, you know. I want two copies, I want a copy, I want, you know, like, oh, you know, like, oh, you've already ordered them, you know, just ticking them off the list, and so, who, 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 do I, who do I sign it to? And I felt like a real writer then. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this is, this is what it's like. It's kind of, I kind of enjoyed it. I, I like that bit. That was, you know, I, I, I just wanted this whole thing to be a fun thing to do, you know. I'm not looking at any major fi financial success. I don't expect that. I would like it, but I don't expect it, you know, but I just... I just wanted to do this fun thing and something successful, something productive. You know, book two's already written. All it needs to be do, done is edited. Book three is virtually finished. There's very little of that left to do. Then we get that edited, so the work's there. So as this thing takes off, I'm ready for it. You know, I got the material, I got, I got the books waiting. You know, but even if it doesn't, I'll still, I'll still do the writing. It's, you know, I've, I've enjoyed the whole thing, so I'm going to keep on doing it. It's a fun thing to do. The general feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. This is actually the second magazine or newspaper that I was on the cover. I also made the front page of Aarhus Stiftung, who also gave me a very good review, five out of six stars. So I was quite pleased with that. It hasn't turned me into an overnight bestseller, but I've sold a few hundred copies and, and we're also available now on Kindle, if you wish to download.